In this video, I'm going to show how to set up a ResSim model, at least talk about the different components of a ResSim model. Before I get into that, I would like to recommend that you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning more about ResSim or some of the other water resources engineering topics that I cover. I really do appreciate it when people subscribe to the channel. Now, when you're learning how to use ResSim, it can be a little bit challenging to figure out what goes into all of these modules. And you'll see here, you have a watershed setup module, you have reservoir network, you have simulation. Uh, within this, you also have alternatives and simulation. So in this video, I'm going to go through that and hopefully provide some clarity about what actually goes into these different modules and some of the things to look for. I do have a longer video where I go into the building of a ResSim model from start to finish. So basically you start out with a blank rest sim model and go all the way to the end to a working rest sim model. And I do recommend that you look at that, but this video can also help give you an overview of how to set up or what's required to set up a rest sim model, maybe in a little bit more detail. So the first thing I'm going to start with is this watershed setup module. And in the watershed setup module, we're going to go in uh, we're going to talk about what a configuration is. So when we're setting up a REST SIM model, the first thing that we need to do is to develop a configuration. And in this, we put in the stream system. So here I have the main stem, I have the tributary, and I'm putting in physical features. So some of the physical features could be a diversion, it could be storage areas, it could be reservoirs. For the most part, most individuals are going to put in a stream and reservoirs, maybe a few other things, but streams and reservoirs are the most common elements that are going to go into this. Typically, you're just going to have one configuration. Now, it is possible that you could have multiple configurations, but something major would have to happen in the basin. So, for instance, here I have just one reservoir on the main stem. But if it's being proposed that you put a reservoir on this tributary and you want to see the results of with and without that reservoir on the tributary, then I could see in that case where you may build two separate configurations and then be able to compare those two. But for the most part, you'll have one configuration in most of the models that you build. One of the other things that I wanted to point out is that I do have just this stick figure. Um, when you're first learning ResSim, I would recommend just do a very simple model with the stick figure. You can import shape files, but if there's a problem with the shape file, it can cause problems with the results or even with the running of your model. So when you're first trying to learn how to use ResSim, I would recommend just keep it simple and just do a stick figure, become comfortable with it, and then you can go and put in a shape file and, and rebuild your model from there. By the way, that won't affect the results. So whether you have a stick figure or a georeference shape file, it doesn't affect your results because your results are going to be determined by the parameters that you use in the model. The next module is the reservoir network module. And here I go into, um, or here I show that you could have multiple reservoir networks if you're making changes to your physical data or to your routing data. Now underneath that I do have alternative because oftentimes you'll develop an alternative when you're in the reservoir network module and I'll go into these components a little bit later but I wanted to first start with this physical data and routing data. So let's take a look at our physical data in this reservoir. So if we're looking at the physical data, one of the things would be the pool. So we look at the elevation storage data. So let's say that you go out and you get a new survey and that elevation storage data changes. Well, if you want to see what type of impact that had on your results and you want to preserve both the old and the new elevation storage, in that case, you would have two reservoir network modules. The same is true for the outlets. So again, another physical property. If your outlet capacity changes or you're adding a new outlet and you want to see what type of difference that causes, so you want to preserve both of those, then you would want to make sure that you create another reservoir network. It's not very common that you're going to have multiple reservoir networks, but it can happen. 
one of the other ways, uh, one of the other reasons why you may have multiple networks is because you've made changes to your reach properties. So if you choose a different method of routing, in this case, I'm using null routing, but you have all these different methods for routing. So if you change the method for routing or if you change the parameters for routing and you want to see what difference that makes to the model and compare it uh, to the model before you made those changes, that could be another case where you want to have multiple reservoir networks. So now we want to look at the alternatives. And for alternatives, it, it's very common to have multiple alternatives. And one of the reasons is because we tend to have multiple operation sets. It can also be because of the look back data or time series changing. And again, when you develop an alternative, you're going to have to specify a network. So if we look at how we're progressing, you start by making a configuration in your watershed setup module. That configuration then gets imported into the reservoir network module. And then you start to add physical and routing data. From there, you'll develop the operations data, specify look back, specify your time series and the network, and you'll have an alternative that's built. So let's look at a couple of these items that are associated with the alternative. So we'll go to our alternative editor and we'll just pick one of these. And we'll look at some of these tabs. First one is run control to where you will specify your time step, some other data. But the one I really wanted to look at is operations. So for each one of your reservoirs, you will have a different operation set, but you can only specify one operation set per reservoir per alternative. So let's go look at an operations set. So in this case, we have an operation set and we specify a constant of 75. And um, actually, I don't see any rules in here, uh, but I do have. Uh, the zone specified, a zone elevation. So let's look at that. Let's say we have a conservation zone of 75, but there's some talk of changing that conservation zone to a different number, and you want to see how that impacts the results. In that case, you would go in and you develop a new operation set. And so that's, that's one of the reasons why you can have multiple operations set. The others would be because of the rules that you have. So in this case, I have two rules in the conservation zone, but let's say that I wanted to change these rules and make them something different. Then in that case, that would be another operation set. So you can see I have lots of, multi, lots of operation sets that are built. So that's one of the main reasons why it's not uncommon to have multiple alternatives. go back to the alternative editor. So we looked at operations, but we can also look at look back. So look back could be another reason why we have multiple alternatives. So in this case, by the way, look back is just saying, what am I starting with in the model? So for my look back elevation at this reservoir, I'm starting at elevation 55. And it's not uncommon to ask, well, you know, what if we Maybe that's low in the pool, but what if we were high in the pool? So maybe you'd want to say, well, what if I was at 80 when I started? How would that affect the results? Well, that would be another alternative. Another reason could be your time series. You might want to feed in different uh, inflow data into the model. And th this has caused some problems for individuals as far as how we get to this point. Th by the way, this is linking of DSS files. We're not really importing DSS files into REST SIM. All we're doing is providing the link on where to go find that. And I do show that in other videos. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about that, but I did want to say that you need to put in flow data both at the upstream end of your model and also at the upstream end of the tributary. You can add flow at any location in the model, but you have to have flow at the upstream end of main stem and any tributaries. So if we go look at this, you can see that the way that we tell RESTSIM that we have inflow data is that on, on the local flow tab, we give it a name 
And we also give it a factor. Basically, if it's a factor of one, we just say just use the values as is that are going to be imported. See here, I named it main inflow, so it's looking for main inflow. I tell it the DSS file, and then I give it the different paths, path names. And again, I go into more detail about DSS in other videos. If you have questions about that or about any other issues, please put them into the comments, and that gives me good ideas on what type of videos to make and where people might be having some problems. So that should give you some idea of why it is that you will have different alternatives. And again, if I go back to my presentation or to this one slide, and by the way, you may want to make a screenshot of this slide if you find that it's helpful to, uh, to have this template. So uncommon to have multiple configurations, um, uncommon to have multiple reservoir networks, not, not impossible, but uncommon, not uncommon to have multiple alternatives, mainly due to the fact that you'll have multiple operation sets where the operation set is going to list out your rules and also your zones. The final one is going to be your simulation module. And the simulation module, we have the, this alternative built, but now we also have to tell it what is the date that we're running the model for. So let's go take a look at the simulation module. So here's our simulation module. And basically when I create this simulation, I tell it what alternative. So if I went to simulation, edit, you can see I have all of these alternatives listed. By the way, I can run uh, multiple alternatives for a simulation if I want to. That's how you can compare results, right? That's a very easy way to compare. So I give it a start date. I also give it a look back date. Look back has to be before start. And then also I give it an end date. And then once I have that information, it now has the date. So I can go back here. Remember I said I need the date and the alternative. And so that's what we define. We define the date and we also define the alternative that we're using. And now we have a simulation. So one last thing that I wanted to cover was you could see here that you also have alternative here and you also have the ability to go in and to edit properties in here so I can edit operations. So one of the things you have to be careful of with whether or not you're editing something in the reservoir network or editing something in the simulation module. So if I edit something in the simulation module, I may want to do that to test um, a certain result. So I may want to make a quick change. And then if I like it, then what I do is I click on that alternative where I made the change, and then I save it to the base directory. And when I do that, if I go back and look at that in the reservoir network, then it will appear in the reservoir network. If I don't like it, what I would then do is replace from base directory and then my original, before I made my change in the simulation module, my original model still resides in reservoir network unless I saved it back to the base directory. So if I then say replace from base directory, it'll override it with what it originally had. So also if I make a change in the reservoir network module and then I go and run my simulation, and this is after a model is developed and you've already run it, uh, but if I make a change in the reservoir network module and then I go over to simulation and run it, that change isn't going to appear unless I was to do replace from base directory. And that can be a whole new topic. I believe I made a video that actually goes into that in a little bit more detail. But if you have questions about that, ask and I can make a separate video that can explain that a little bit more. So hopefully you found this to be helpful as far as how to deal with the structure of ResSim and what these different components mean and what they require. Um, if you found it helpful, again, please subscribe to the, the channel. And I do appreciate you watching this video.